Hi, my name is Ian Hartman, Solution Architect at Western Computer. Welcome back to this fourth part of a five-part series where I'm introducing you to Product Configurator and Dynamics 365 for Finance and Supply Chain Management. In prior episodes, I showed you the Expression Editor, where I focused on attributes and constraints. And I also presented how the editor can be used to have the system generate some tactically correct code for you, meaning that you do not need to be a developer or pay someone to write expensive custom code. Now, if you haven't seen the prior three recordings, then I suggest you go back and review them. That way you'll have the foundation you need to understand what I'm about to present. So let's go into the product and sitting on the product information management is the product configuration models menu branch where we're going to keep working. And I've been using this high end speaker. We're going to continue to work with that. Now, some of the things I want to show you, let me just collapse this, is attributes. We talked about attributes in prior sessions, such as these user-defined attributes that you see here, the finish and the corner protection. I also showed you system-defined attributes, where I can pick from any of my tables. And in this case, I was showing how I can pick an item group, and it'll dynamically change the items available. And I was using this as an add-on item, for example. And I'm keeping these hidden because I don't want to use them right now. But the assembly runtime is normally hidden as well, and I'm going to unhide it because the purpose of today's presentation is to show you calculations. Now, the calculation I'm going to show you is related to a particular route operation. And the route operation is the assembly operation. I'm trying to tell the system that, of course, I've set this up in advance, where I typed in my own name and my own description, and then I'm picking from attributes. These are the same attributes you saw above, and I'm telling it to pick the assembly runtime, and then I'm telling it to assign the value to that target attribute assembly runtime. So let's go look at the editor really quickly, even though we've been going over the editor in last few sessions. And I'm going to describe what this does. But first, I'm going to cut it out of here so you can see all symbols shows me everything on attributes, operators, and values. Attributes, these are the same attributes that are in the dropdown, the same things that are sitting across all my attributes. These are available operators, so I can open and close parentheses, plus sign, minus sign, less than, equal to, absolute value, min, max, arc tangent, etc etc ceiling and floor measurements all that's there and then the value is associated with the particular attribute so if an attribute is cabinet finish that may be black or brown for example or black or white so i'm just going to paste this back in i'm not going to validate it validate is where the system goes out and makes sure that when it writes the actual code behind the scenes the syntax is correct so let's take a look at what this says. It says, if the speaker height divided by 3 is greater than 4.1, then I want to assign 1.25 to this assembly runtime, the assembly runtime attribute. You're going to see how it gets assigned through the route operations over here on the left. I'm saying that, again, if it's divided by 3 and it's greater than 4.1, we're going to assign 1.25. Otherwise, we're going to assign the value of 0.75. So, I'm going to use, let's say, a speaker height of 15 divided by 3 is going to exceed 4.1. That'll make it 1.25. And I'm going to show you in a test that if I use a speaker height of 10 divided by 3, it's less than 4.1. So it's going to assign the value of 0.75. So how do we test that? We go into model and run test. Running a test simulates as though I was doing a, either a production order or I was an order taker taking a sales order. So let's pick a white cabinet and let's pick a black grill. Notice how metal is unavailable. If I pick metal, it says there's a contradiction. That's because in an earlier session under constraints over here on the left, I had put in the rule that says I'm picking false by default unless, sorry, metal only applies to, let's say, a black front cabinet finish. So I'm going to pick black and I'm not going to pick metal. I'm going to pick black. And it came back default that is false. And again, it shows true as available. Now I also showed you show feasible. Show feasible in this case won't show the true because it's not feasible. And if you remember, when I clicked on an incorrect setting over here, it won't show white either. And it told me when I was using the not feasible, 
that I would be able to click on white, but then it would tell me there's a contradiction based on my rule. So let's go back and we will change this all around. I'm gonna pick black, white, false. Remember, speaker height of 10 is less than 4.1 when it's divided by three, so it comes back with 0.75. And if the speaker height is 15, that's 15 divided by three is greater than 4.1. So it comes back at 1.25. And of course the model has a contradiction. So if I told it to take black, now it'll allow me to click OK. Now, how does that actually end up getting assigned? Well, in the route operation details, and the same is true in the bomb operation details, here under times, I'm gonna assign an attribute as opposed to a value. When I'm going to show you in the bombs, I'm actually assigning a value for the item. But here I'm assigning the attribute. And again, these are the attributes that we looked at and I'm assigning it to the assembly runtime. So the assembly runtime will take on that characteristic value. Now, how does that work in bombs? Bombs are a little bit different. Bombs click on the bomb and I'll just go to the grill cloth really quickly. The grill cloth is saying that if this particular front grill, and again, this is my name and my description, is not equal to metal, and that was used using this edit condition from the editor, then I'm gonna assign part M21. But if the metal grill is metal, I'm signing part 22. Not metal, 21. Yes, metal, 22. If corner protection will be enabled, then I'm gonna use this part. You'll notice that the cabinet is always M08, there's no conditions, same thing with the crossovers, the tweeters, etc. So if I click on, for example, the cloth grill, I'm gonna show you on the bomb line details here, the value is coming from the item, which is the item I just showed you. However, the color, is coming from an attribute, which is the attribute that we're using for our front grill, which were the black, white, and metal. And then if metal was selected, corner protection would also be enabled. So earlier in the series, I talked about using this in a sales order, but I haven't discussed using it in a production order. So let's go take a look at what happens when I create a production order so I'll go to production control, all production orders, and I will create a brand new production order. Now see here at the top, it just says create production order identification. When I put my item number in, it's gonna know it's a configured item and it's gonna add a menu branch right here called configure. So let's go ahead and pick my part. Oop. Okay, the high-end speaker. Here's my configure production. Before I do that, it also added the default bomb and a default route. Now, depending on what I do, it may keep that. But remember these numbers, the bomb is 23, the route is 26. So let's go ahead and configure. I didn't turn off assembly runtime. Let's go do that. I wanna make sure, no, it's not, it's not important. <laughs> okay, configure. So I'm going to pick a finish black and a front grill of metal and corner protection is true and the speaker height of 14 and that gives me 1.25. Notice this next is not lit up. That's because there's only one level. When I talk in the next session about subcomponents, this will light up because we're going to have a multi-level kitting assembly. Okay, so now this is what it produced. The configuration name is based on what I wanted to call it and how I told it to set up those conditions. And notice that our bomb and route numbers have changed significantly. And if I go look at this route now, the route is showing me that it's the black metal, etc., etc. And if I go look at the route details, it's showing me that the route relation here it's showing me the holes I'm drilling. And if I look at the assembly, which I'm anchored on times, it's 1.25. See how it got that? Now let's go look at the bomb. 
Remember in the bomb, I told that I wanted the metal protector and all that. So you'll see that I've got my main speaker here. Then I've got the corner protection and all my other parts that I needed. And we can go look at this in the designer if you want. If I click on the designer here, the bomb is showing the cabinet protector, the crossovers and all those different pieces. And remember those were assigned by item number as we see here, but they also put, I picked black. So you'll see that black has been configured here as well. So the production order, back out of here, if I click okay, it's gonna bring in 376 and 399 for the route. Well, that's it for today's installment of Product Configurator, where I showed you how to work with calculations, bombs, and routes. Come back and we'll take a look at how to set up subcomponents, user requirements, and sales prices in our final edition of Product Configurator for D365 FNSCM. And if you want to see more, remember that you can always go to our resources.westerncomputer.com website.